everyone. So today let's study a little bit of anatomy and our topic of discussion is anterior triangle of the neck. So let's see. Okay, so we all know that in our neck there are two major triangles. Okay, there is an anterior triangle and there is a posterior triangle. And who divides these into two triangles? It is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Okay, this muscle here is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So, the sternocleidomastoid muscle divides the neck into an anterior portion and a posterior portion. So, anterior to it, anterior to the sternocleidomastoid, this portion here is what you call as the anterior triangle and the one that is posterior. Okay, the posterior part of the sternocleidomastoid muscle is what you call as the posterior triangle. Okay. Okay. So, this picture also is showing you basically both the anterior triangle and the posterior triangle. Here you have the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Okay. This portion and anterior to it is your anterior triangle and posterior to it is your posterior triangle. So, in today's session, we are going to see in detail about this portion. Okay. This triangle here. Okay, this is your anterior triangle and this anterior triangle is subdivided into further smaller triangles. So, we are going to see in detail about that. So, let's see. Now, the boundaries of your anterior triangle is medially you have the anterior median plane of the neck. Laterally, you have the sternocleidomastoid muscle and superiorly you have the base of the mandible. Okay, look at this picture here. This is your anterior triangle here. Okay, this is your anterior triangle. So, medially, what do you have? You have these anterior, this midline of the neck. Okay, you have the midline of the neck. That is the medial part. Laterally, you have this sternocleidomastoid muscle. And superiorly, that is this portion, you have the base of the mandible. So, this triangle, this forms a triangle now, right? So, this is your anterior triangle. Now, let's see the subdivisions. I told you the anterior triangle is further divided into smaller triangles. Okay, so it is divided by the digastric muscle and superior belly of omohyoid. You will be listening to the names of these two muscles frequently. That is digastric muscle and superior belly of omohyoid. It is basically these two muscles that is dividing the anterior triangle into further small triangles. So, we have four of them. Okay, there are four smaller triangles. There is a submental triangle, digastric triangle, carotid triangle and a muscular triangle. So, let's see the details of each of them. Okay, so before getting into the details, just showing you the four triangles. Here, this portion is your submental triangle. Okay, the triangle that is seen in between the two anterior bellies of digastric. Okay, this is the anterior belly of digastric. This is also the anterior belly of digastric and here is the posterior belly of digastric. Okay, so the portion, the triangle in between the two anterior bellies that is here is your submental triangle. Now, the triangle that is formed here between the anterior belly of digastric and the posterior belly of digastric is your digastric triangle and here this triangle is what you call as the carotid triangle and here you have the muscular triangle okay you have the same on either sides here also you have the carotid triangle and here also correspondingly you have the muscular triangle okay okay now this picture is also showing you the four triangles it's a colored picture so here this pink color here this is your submental triangle Okay, and then between the anterior belly of digastric and the posterior belly of digastric, this blue colored triangle, that is your digastric triangle. And then here, this light pink is your carotid triangle and this green portion over here. Okay, this triangle is your muscular triangle. Okay, so this is just for you to understand the relative positions of all these four triangles. And this larger one, this entire portion, okay, is your anterior triangle. Now, let's see the details of each of them starting with the submental triangle. Okay, the first one is a submental triangle. It's a median triangle. Okay, it's a median triangle and you know each side it is bound by the anterior belly of digastric. Okay, it is in between the two anterior bellies of the digastric and the base is formed by the body of the hyoid bone and the apex is formed by the chin. Okay, and its floor is basically formed by your mylohyoid muscles. You have right and left mylohyoid muscles and the contents are there are some two to four small submental lymph nodes okay small submental lymph nodes nothing much significant is there it's just these lymph nodes 
So this is the picture. Now here, okay, this triangle is your submental triangle. So where is it seen? It is seen in between the two anterior bellies of digastric muscle. See, this is anterior belly of digastric. This is posterior belly of digastric on one side. And this is the anterior belly of digastric and the posterior belly of digastric on the other side. So the triangle in between these two anterior bellies, okay, this triangle is your submental triangle triangle and so who forms the base the base is formed by the hyoid bone here right this forms the base and what forms the apex the apex is your chin okay towards the up it's the chin right so that forms the apex and the floor is your right and left you have these mylohyoid muscles here okay right and left mylohyoid muscles and what are the contents you can see some small submental lymph nodes right some small submental lymph nodes are there okay so now let's move on to the second triangle that is your digastric triangle. So what are the boundaries of digastric triangle? Antro inferiorly you have the anterior belly of digastric. Postro inferiorly you have the posterior belly of digastric. And superiorly or your base is the base of the mandible. Remember for submental triangle the base was the hyoid bone. Okay, But for the digastric triangle the base is the mandible. Okay. I'll show you the picture. See, let's consider, okay, this is the mandible, okay? So, this forms the base, right? So, the base is the mandible. Now, we have antro inferiorly, that is this portion, okay? It is anterior as well as it is going inferior, right? So, antro inferiorly, you have the anterior belly of the digastric and postro inferiorly, okay? Postro and inferior, you have the posterior belly of digastric. So, that forms your digastric triangle okay now let's see what is the floor of it so floor anteriorly you have the mylohyoid muscle but posteriorly you have the hyoglossus okay you have the hyoglossus posteriorly for your submental triangle it was right and left mylohyoid muscles right both anteriorly posteriorly you all had mylohyoid muscles but for your digastric triangle anteriorly it's mylohyoid but posteriorly it is the hyoglossus then the roof of the triangle the roof is formed by you know the superficially it is the skin then under that you have the superficial fascia then if you go you have the deep fascia and so on and the content is it hosts the submandibular salivary gland okay it's very very important it is in the digastric triangle that you have the most important salivary gland. You have your submandibular salivary gland. Okay, so now let's move on to the third triangle. Again, this is a very, very important triangle. That is your carotid triangle. Okay, carotid triangle. We'll see why it is called as a carotid triangle. So first, let me tell you the boundaries. Again, antro superiorly, you have the posterior belly of digastric antro inferiorly you have the superior belly of omohyoid and posteriorly you have the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid don't worry i'll show you this with the help of a picture all you have to do is just learn to draw that diagram and then you can remember it you don't have to mug up these boundaries okay so the floor is formed by middle constrictor of pharynx inferior constrictor of pharynx and thyrohyoid membrane Again, I'll show you pictures. Okay, so see, this is the carotid triangle. Now, imagine, okay, this is the carotid triangle. Okay, so imagine you are standing here in the carotid triangle. So, when you look up, that is antro superiorly. This is anterior and it is superior, right? So, antro superiorly, who is this muscle here? It is your posterior belly of digastric, right? This is your anterior belly. Mm? So, this automatically is your posterior belly of digastric. Then, if you see antro inferiorly, anterior and inferiorly, if you see, what do you have? You have this superior belly of homohyoid, okay? This muscle is your superior belly of homohyoid. And then, posteriorly, behind, what do you have? It is your sternocleidomastoid muscle. So, please learn to draw this diagram and it becomes very easy, okay? So, with that, you have learned the boundaries. Now going on to the floor. I told you the floor is formed by your middle constrictor of pharynx. Okay, that is this green portion here. Okay, middle constrictor of pharynx. Then this here is your inferior constrictor. So inferior constrictor of pharynx and then your thyrohyoid membrane. Okay, so these three basically forms your floor. The middle constrictor, the inferior constrictor and the thyrohyoid membrane okay 
Now coming to the roof, it's almost the same. You have the skin, then you have the superficial fascia and then you have the investing layer of deep cervical fascia. Now coming to the contents of carotid triangle, we have three contents. Okay, that is you have artery, you have vein and you have nerves. All three are there in carotid triangle. In our submental triangle, we said there is just a few submental lymph nodes. And in submandibular triangle, we to, or in the digastric triangle, we said that there is a submandibular salivary gland. That's it. We did not have any arteries or veins or nerves. But in the carotid triangle, we have all three of them and it's very, very important. Okay. So, let's start with the artery. What are the arteries that are present in your carotid triangle? You have your common carotid artery and you have the branches of your common carotid artery that is your internal carotid as well as your external carotid so now i hope you understood why it is called as the carotid triangle because it has the carotid arteries within it okay you have the common carotid and the two branches of common carotid that is your internal carotid as well as your external carotid but we do not have all the branches of external carotid inside the carotid triangle we just have five branches okay basically you have the superior thyroid the facial and the lingual all the three anterior branches and then you have the medial branch the only medial branch is your ascending pharyngeal right and posterior branch that is your occipital branch okay so you can remember it something like falso or something like that okay f a l s o okay so it's like your facial artery your ascending pharyngeal your lingual artery your superior thyroid artery and your occipital artery so with that we have finished the arteries now let's see the veins it's very easy you have the internal jugular vein okay you have your internal jugular vein and then you have your common facial vein pharyngeal vein and your lingual vein and ultimately actually all of them drain into your internal jugular vein only now coming to the nerves again very important to remember the nerves within the carotid triangle we have the vagus nerve that actually runs downwards then we have the superior laryngeal nerve superior laryngeal nerve which is also actually a branch of vagus and it's further two branches external and internal that is also seen in the carotid triangle then we have the hypoglossal nerve which is actually running forwards okay and we have a spinal accessory nerve that is running backwards now you can just remember this picture for the nerve see you have the vagus nerve the first one is a vagus nerve okay that is coming downwards it's coming downwards okay and then you have the branch of vagus which is the superior laryngeal see it's coming all the way here superior laryngeal and then it's dividing into two you have an internal and you have an external branch and then we have third one is the hypoglossal nerve that's running forward it's coming forward like this okay so you have the hypoglossal forward and then you have the spinal accessory nerve which is going backwards okay so that's the fourth one so four nerves it's basically vagus branch of vagus only that is superior laryngeal then you have the hypoglossal and you have the spinal accessory so four nerves now coming to the last triangle that is your muscular triangle now the boundaries of muscular triangle is anteriorly you have the anterior midline of the neck from hyoid to sternum. Postero superiorly you have the superior belly of homohyoid and postero inferiorly we have the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Okay again so this is the picture of your muscular triangle and okay this is the muscular triangle so imagine you are standing inside the muscular triangle okay so when you look anteriorly what do you see you have the anterior median line of the neck that is extending from your hyoid to your sternum then postero superiorly that is posterior and superiorly you have the superior belly of your homohyoid and posterior and inferiorly you have the sternocleidomastoid muscle the anterior border of your sternocleidomastoid muscle okay Okay, so now let's see what are the contents of this muscular triangle. Okay, it actually has all the infrahyoid muscles. Okay, that is there are four infrahyoid muscles. Okay, that is why it is actually called as a muscular triangle. Okay, so one is your sternohyoid, sternothyroid, thyrohyoid and omohyoid. Let me show you a picture so it becomes simpler. Okay, first of all this is your hyoid bone here okay and this is your manubrium sterni okay this is your sternum and this is your scapula 
okay so i told you we have four muscles right the first one i told you is a sternohyoid so as the name suggests it's sternohyoid so it's starting from the sternum okay from here it's going up to the hyoid mode so it's sternohyoid originating from sternum and it is inserting itself into the hyoid bone the second is your sternothyroid so again it's starting from the sternum it's originating from the sternum and it's going up to the oblique line on the lamina of thyroid cartilage this here okay this is the oblique line on the lamina of thyroid cartilage so it's a sternothyroid starting from sternum to this line on the thyroid cartilage then you have the thyrohyoid thyrohyoid is originating from the oblique line on this thyroid cartilage okay thyrohyoid right so it's starting from thyroid cartilage and it's going up to your hyoid bone so the name will itself tell you what is the origin and what is the insertion and then the fourth one is the omohyoid muscle it has both inferior belly okay and it has a superior belly so it's starting or it's originating with its inferior belly from the scapula and it's going all the way up to the superior belly to the hyoid bone attaching itself to the hyoid bone okay so let's see the origin and insertion of all of these muscles starting with the sternohyoid okay sternohyoid what will be the origin as the name suggests it's sternum right so manubrium sterni and insertion is the lower border of the hyoid bone sternohyoid okay so it's originating from sternum inserting itself into the hyoid bone action is it depresses the hyoid okay please remember it depresses the hyoid and the nerve supply is by the ansa cervicalis and c1 and c2 and c3 okay so coming to the second muscle it is the sternothyroid so again origin will be from the sternum manubrium sterni insertion is to the thyroid right thyroid means it's on the oblique line on the lamina of thyroid cartilage action it depresses the larynx okay it is not depressing the hyoid bone because it is attached to the thyroid right so it is depressing the larynx and the nerve supply is the same okay this is the ansa cervicalis c1 c2 and c3 now moving on to the thyrohyoid so originating from the thyroid that is oblique line on the lamina of thyroid cartilage insertion is definitely to the hyoid so lower border of hyoid bone will be the insertion and action is it depresses the hyoid as well as it elevates the larynx okay it is depressing the hyoid as well as elevating the larynx and the nerve supply is c1 through hypoglossal nerve okay please remember this okay this is an exception it is c1 through hypoglossal nerve the other two muscles were by the ansa cervicalis c1 c2 c3 but thyrohyoid is c1 through hypoglossal nerve now coming to the last muscle that is your omohyoid i told you right it's originating from the scapula that is by the inferior belly and it is inserting it's going all the way up to the hyoid so the insertion is to the lower border of hyoid and that is done by the superior belly and the action of omohyoid is also to depress the hyoid bone because it is attaching itself to the hyoid right so it is depressing the hyoid bone and the nerve supply is same it is the ansa cervicalis only the superior belly is actually supplied by the superior root of ansa cervicalis and the inferior belly is by the inferior root of ansa cervicalis but ultimately it is the ansa cervicalis okay so with that we have finished uh, the explanation of all the four muscles an important point to note here now is all the infrahyoid muscles are supplied by ansa cervicalis i told you right all of them were supplied by ansa cervicalis except there's just one exception that is your thyrohyoid okay your thyrohyoid which is supplied directly by c1 through hypoglossal nerve this is a very very important point to note that all the infrahyoid muscles are supplied by ansa cervicalis except your thyrohyoid which is directly supplied by c1 through hypoglossal nerve okay so that's it we have finished the anterior triangle uh, so i hope it was conveyed well now these are the few questions that were asked in the previous years they have asked to explain the anterior triangle of the neck mentioning boundaries and all the contents so here you have to elaborate all the uh, subdivisions also that is all the four smaller triangles also you have to mention and you have to give the boundaries and the contents in brief then they have asked describe the infrahyoid muscles okay infrahyoid muscles the last one that we did the contents of the muscular triangle right the four infrahyoid muscles that is the omohyoid the sternohyoid the sternothyroid and the 
thyrohyoid please remember to draw that picture and then everything the origin insertion and almost even the actions also you can remember okay so they have asked you to describe it under origin insertion nerve supply and action and then digastric triangle its boundaries and contents i hope you remember the digastric triangle right it was situated between the anterior belly and the posterior belly of digastric muscle okay it is a digastric triangle right so it is in between the two bellies of the digastric muscle okay so i've taken my reference from bd chauresia's human anatomy for dental students third edition please get back to your textbooks and have a good read if you found our video informative please do not forget to like share comment and subscribe to our channel and also press the bell icon so that you get notified every time we upload a new video you can also stay in touch with us at dental school on our insta page thank you